this this movie, Norm of the North, how does one describe such a vile excuse for a film? This movie is a special kind of bad. We have a movie here so pampering that it can make a Viacom CEO blush. It was destined to go straight to DVD, animated by people who have done nothing but straight to DVD videos, that at the last second decided, hey, let's subject this thing to theaters. Give Elf Bowling credit, it wasn't pretentious enough to think that it belonged in cinemas. And honestly, I'd rather watch that than this. What we have here is a delicate little ball of bad animation, annoying characters, a pointless plot, and every shade of bodily humor all in the span of 88 minutes. Shall we explore this intricate piece of shit together? Who knows just what we might find. This movie starts out with a badly rendered boat on a badly rendered ocean that looks like it would fit on a PlayStation 1 game. Then we have whales trying to show us the majesty of the Arctic. And we get our title, Norm of the North. We see some lemmings that were sitting on top of a pile of snow that housed a polar bear. And I will warn you right now, by the end of this movie, not only will you want those lemmings dead, you will want the whole species extinct. Don't listen to the haters, Norm. You're a polar bear. Hey, how bad does a movie have to be when literally the first line of the movie is, Don't listen to the haters? That's probably what production on this movie was like every single day. They just started up every day. Don't listen to the haters. Don't listen to the haters. This here is Norm, and he's trying to hunt down some seals. Read them away, boys. Carabooyah! We're going to have a list here, and by the end of this review, that list is going to be very, very long. They say I can't hunt. Well, obviously that's not true. You're a carnivorous wild animal. If you can't hunt, then you would have starved to death years ago. I mean, in Happy Feet, it was dancing, which was, at best, a mating ritual. And animals can still live without sex, despite what that skeevy guy says down the road. But if they don't get food, they will die. Two minutes into the movie, and we've already got a plot-destroying plot hole. So, the seal runs through a huge group of lemmings, some of which go right into Norm's mouth. Yet, he doesn't eat them. The makers of this film do know what the purpose of hunting is in the animal kingdom, right? Bears don't do it for sport like humans do. They need to do it to survive. Norm catches the seal and they go off a cliff. This might have been funny or something if they had more processing power than a dead Tamagotchi pet. Coincidentally, that's why all the slapstick in this movie fails. Norm sees his girlfriend, Elizabeth. She barely appears anywhere throughout the entire film. On top of that, she's barely a motivation at all and only exists because a by-the-numbers kids movie needs a guy getting the girl at the end. Also, I don't know if it's just me, but her design is really uncanny. The other polar bears I can kinda tolerate, but her, no. The guy looks like an idiot in front of his crush, but she finds it charming anyway, cliche. It's like pure ice up here. An accident waiting to happen, you know? I mean, somebody should really do something about this, huh? So you take a bad joke, and then you keep going on and on with it way past its funeral. We spend like 30 seconds with them setting up a danger zone. And the joke is that the entire Arctic is made of ice, not just that one little spot. Anyway, uh, I really should get going now. I, I got a seal to go catch and eat and I... Anyway. Babbling because you're in love, cliche. Wow, this movie really knows the notes that it has to hit to really tick me off. Even a stupid childish crush needs more than just a character who can't put two words together. In every fucking movie this happens, it's annoying. It just burns time while the characters don't really do anything. Then we see a bunch of human tourists. Any last words before I eat you? Yeah, mic check. Yours sounds worse than mine. Seriously, his microphone sounds broken in this scene. You always know exactly what to say to get to me. Eat him! Eat him! I'm just gonna... So, Norm decides that he's not going to eat the seal. You wanna know why I'm not gonna eat you? You got a minute? We already know the reason. He gave you those puppy dogs eye. And you're a ghost who starved to death years ago because you can't hunt for shit. And a bear that doesn't hunt starves to death. So, in the flashback, Norm goes on about health class for some reason. And then we get his first encounter with humans. Two parents are so focused on taking pictures that they just let their daughter run out front to see some polar bears. Who, if they won't maul her to death, then her overprotective parents most certainly would. Seriously, this scene takes like a minute and her parents don't even move. They just stand there, ready to take pictures of their daughter's brutal mauling. Suddenly, this scene got very disturbing. Maybe that was their intention all along. Then Norm realizes he can speak human. Not English, not Spanish, not Pig Latin. Not whatever. Norm can speak the unified language that every human on Earth just happens to speak. Isn't it great that we as a species have managed to figure that one out? By the way, this has literally no explanation. You and me, something amazing happened. And now I can talk to animals. It's really cool, but totally secret. 
Well, fuck you, I get to speak to humans because of the mystical qualities of arctic potatoes. Farming and cultivating them is how I'm assuming he avoided starvation as well. Norm goes to see his grandfather, the king of the arctic, and we drop ripping off happy feet for a moment to start ripping off the Lion King. Classy. Nothing is wrong with you, Norm. You're special. Anyone else kind of think that that's how this movie was pitched? I share the same trait. I, too, can speak to our human visitors. Did you trade some magic beans? And why did this ability skip over your son and go straight to your grandson? Polar bears are icons of the Arctic, Norm, and an icon with a voice can be very powerful indeed. Behold! The most powerful thing on my PC! Our land and we're responsible. So you see, we don't have to worry about this global warming shit. The polar bear's got it covered. So, out of nowhere, Norm gets an MP3 player and he starts dancing. This goes nowhere. Then Norm is taken out of his story by everyone in the Arctic laughing at him. Except the humans, who are the only ones directly watching him. The humans have completely disappeared. And now we see the background artist experimenting with a smear tooling gimp. I'm a bear who can't hunt. I'm softer than frozen yogurt. You are the antithesis to natural selection, already established. Can we move on? Still got like 80 minutes of the shit to go. Norm's brother comes in and starts laughing at Norm. He has no purpose in this movie. The movie would be entirely the same if he wasn't there. What he does is try to put on a show for the humans, because high happy tourism equals less pollution. That always says, if humans come to our land and clap, they can't come to our land and crap. Give them a scene, ha <laughs> the Arctic stays clean. That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. The humans won't destroy something they love. Oh, just wait until he discovers the internet. Also, the rest of the movie tries to portray humans in the Arctic as a bad thing. So, then we get the show. It comes out of nowhere, it's nonsensical, and it contributes absolutely nothing to the plot. Yep, it's a big-lipped alligator moment in a movie full of them. It's basically just like waving keys in front of your toddler. Norm's brother gets Norm to start dancing. Something that was previously shown that the Arctic denizens don't find impressive at all. Also, every time that Norm starts dancing, it gives them a chance to shoehorn in a pop song to pad out the movie soundtrack. All this ends up doing is making Norm feel a little bit more depressed. Something that he already was before the scene. And the next thing you know, I'm twerking in front of a boatload of human tourists. You know, when you get to that line of the movie, I think you should know that you done fucked up. Good God, Scuttle, the years have not been kind to you. The bird shows Norm that a tourist house has been set up in the Arctic. From the house, Norm learns that humans are going to start moving there, because that makes perfect corporate sense to try to make tourist homes in the Arctic, one of the most inhospitable, least comfortable places on the planet. We're probably going to have tourist houses on the moon before we have tourist homes in the Arctic. Norm tries to talk to his father about getting rid of the tourist house. For some unexplained reason, no one believes him, even though he has a witness who can back him up. Up, who was written entirely out of this part of the film for some reason. Socrates, why the hell didn't you go with Norm? Socrates and I snuck in, and look, from Florida. You lived your entire life in the Arctic. You shouldn't know what Florida is, let alone have a plastic flamingo. Then the king suddenly becomes scared because I don't know. The king has no point in the entire film. Look, son, you want to be king? A future king isn't supposed to get so emotional. So I'm gonna get all out of nowhere frightened and angry, you cool with that? We have a scene where the bird tries to convince Norm to get off of his ass and do something. And this leads to my theory that Socrates is actually the true villain of the entire movie, because this leads to an absolutely major fuck up. Perhaps the worst mistake that anyone has made in the entire movie. It's called the plot. Up comes Elizabeth. She tries to give Norm a pep talk. Didn't we just have this scene like two minutes ago? Norm gets two pep talks back to back because I guess the screenwriters decided that Elizabeth needed something to do. But it, it just makes her uselessness in the story a lot more apparent. We see a director trying to make a commercial. Norm stops him and then this character comes on scene. Nothing really happens until Norm gets the idea to stop the commercial. He says that he needs soldiers. And then pop in the lemmings. He wants you to stomp on him. He wants you to prove how tough he is. Okay, the lemming is dead and the other two run terrified. No, uh, unfortunately, he survives. By the time that this movie is over, not only are you gonna want the entire species of Arctic lemmings extinct, you're probably gonna want to nuke the fucking Arctic. This is Olympia. She's the most useless character. Not just in this movie, not just in the entire medium of animation, but in the entire history of characters. 
Even the laziest, most incompetent fanfiction has all of its characters have more of a point than Olympia. I don't mean she just does nothing or doesn't contribute to the plot. She's not even the annoying kind of useless. If you wrote her out of the plot, the plot would be 100% the same. She is that useless. I'll even pass by her scenes to show you just how intact the plot is. To give her credit though, her mother isn't much better. The air is so fresh here, it's completely unpolluted. Holy Hitchcock! That bird just pooped on me! I think that's good luck, isn't it? Sure! Have a nice day at school, kids! I hope the birds poop on your head! Speaking of which, as Norm destroys the set, we get another poop joke. Yeah, this movie, it's got a lot of them. You know, we all ask this question at some point in our lives. If you can go back in time and stop any major disaster, what would you do? Maybe you'd stop the Titanic from sinking. Maybe stop the Hindenburg from crashing. Me personally, I'd stop the Minions from being made. If I judged a product based on all the terrible things that came out of it, Minions would be the worst invention in the history of humanity. I'm exaggerating. Fix the rest in post. Anything can be fixed in post. In one of my movies, I wrote the plot in post. The logic behind this movie, I I'm sure. Then we see Norm relaxing in a hot tub made by the lemmings. The bubbles are either generated by them kicking their legs or farting. And considering everything else about this movie, I wouldn't be surprised if it was, uh, both. <coughs> Charming. A hot tub made of farts. Who wouldn't want to relax in that? Vera runs outside and the ice starts cracking beneath her feet. Not wanting Vera to die, Norm goes running after her. And like the genius she is, Vera decides to make a commercial out of a polar bear chasing her down. So about 20 years later, some explorers find a camera frozen in the ice next to a pile of bones that had distinct polar bear scratch markings. Actually, that's what you'd expect to happen. I mean, what is the logic here? Having a polar bear teeth out running you down while the ice is cracking beneath your feet and you are a few seconds from death. Does that really sound like a good advertisement to sell vacation homes. However, Vera manages to escape, and Norm running around like an idiot did absolutely nothing. Vera tells her boss that the director quit, but after a freak out, he says that he loves an angry charging polar bear that looks like it's going to kill and eat all of his customers. This villain? Well, you know that CEO who is the villain in every other movie in the entirety of history? Well, that's Mr. Green. So, believe it or not, everything up to this point has been roughly tolerable. But now this movie goes through countless decisions that make it the stupidest animated film that I have ever seen. I mean it, it gives out bowling a run for its money. Yes, whatever happened in that movie was confusing as fuck. But the plot points had at least some kind of logical connection. Here's what happens in this film. Scrap the campaign. We need a real symbol of the Arctic who can talk to these people and convince these morons to buy my homes. Find an actor who looks just like that bear. Keep in mind that the plan here is to stop Mr. Green's plan from coming into fruition. And if he didn't get an actor that looked like Norm, he probably wouldn't be able to make his plan come true. So what does Norm do? Take a wild guess. Here's a hint. Think of the fucking stupidest thing that you can. You need to think really, really hard, by the way, because only someone with a master's degree in stupidity can come up with something like this. You heard them, Norm. They want an actor who can use the Arctic to sell the Arctic. If that actor is you, we can use the Arctic to save the Arctic. You need to go to New York and stop these houses from ever getting here. Yeah, Norm decides to go to New York to become an actor for Mr. Green. Why? That is the dumbest thing that I've ever heard. You know this list here? Well, because of what Norm is about to do, the best possible outcome for the plot is for him to actually be on that list. The only way for him to have any merit at all in the plot is to completely ruin everything for everyone and absolutely fail his duties. Letting Mr. Green destroy the Arctic. That is the only way he's going to have any effect on the plot whatsoever. And since this is trying to be a by the numbers kids movie, you know that's not going to happen. But honestly, wouldn't it be so therapeutic if it did? So Norm hops into the home and unfortunately the fucking lemmings follow him. Oh, believe me, they get worse, much worse. And Sir Chew on pop tune number two, there are going to be a lot of them at the very least they're better than this movie trying to come up with original compositions because everything original about this movie is fucking stupid. We finally get to the main plot of this movie, 27 minutes into an 88 minute film, and I just realized that we're not even halfway done. <laughs> Shit. So the crane lifts up the house and presumably breaks all of the furniture inside. No! 
What's with the no? Your, your plan was to get to New York. You're here in New York. And that trip can only take you closer to your goal of helping Mr. Green destroy your Arctic. And I'm not letting you forget that, by the way. Two guys walk into the house and say that there's another talking bear. Then they call on a walkie-talkie to get tranquilizer gun. Bear speaking in English. First thing I think is, yep, it's a danger to society, so I'm gonna call for a tranquilizer gun. Even though if I thought it was dangerous, it would be smarter to run away first. So... Never mind the he'll die if he can't hunt thing. A polar bear is able to run through New York City in the summertime without getting heat stroke. I, I guess we've established that biology doesn't apply in this movie, but it still gets very distracting that a polar bear, which even in the Arctic spends most of his time trying to cool down, is running and dancing around in New York City in the summertime, a place that can get temperature of over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Norm freaks out at first, but then he notices a guy in a polar bear costume, and he follows him to Mr. Green. Then this happens. Okay, how stupid do you think kids are? Really? They get into a fight, and we see a problem that I've been ignoring since the start. The animation. Well, this isn't the worst quality 3D animation in the world. It seems par for the course for a straight-to-DVD crap, even on the lower end of the scale. It still has problems. A lot of characters move in strange, uncanny ways, and it doesn't work for the style they're going for. It feels like this movie wanted to be a 2D movie, but it couldn't because of potatoes. So the guy in the polar bear costume beats up the two henchmen because there are no police in New York City who would stop a fist fight in broad daylight. It was just a misunderstanding. We thought you was a real talking bear. Yep, that's definitely a sound conclusion. What? So the actor Norm hit it off. Then we establish that everyone is an idiot and no one can tell that Norm is a polar bear. They automatically assume that he's just a guy in a costume. Mr. Green, let me be frank. Condos in the Arctic is a ludicrous idea. Now, condos in the bus. Let me guess, this is a straw man of the first person you pitched the movie to. People aren't interested in living in the Arctic. Know how I know? Because that graph shows you're currently at a 3% approval rating. Until that number gets above 85%, not approved. Then why the fuck is Norm here? Then we get this scene. One of the worst in the movie. Hey guys, toilet's right there! Help yourselves! <laughs> the lemmings start peeing into a fish tank, and they do this for literally a half a minute. It, it keeps on going for literally 30 seconds, and they let it drag. You, you really do have a low opinion of kids, don't you, movie? And if that's bad, 30 seconds later, the joke continues. So finally, Vera comes out, thank you, and tries to get everyone to act as real as possible. You know, I just realized something that I don't think the people who made this movie did. Vera saw Norm in the Arctic. She knows what Norm looks like. And now she's standing five feet in front of him. You're pushing it. I mean, you've been pushing it from the start, but come on. You, come with me. Only if I can bring my lemmings. Cute. And it's very marketable. Yes, the things that were pissing into a fish tank for 30 seconds. I can't wait to get the McDonald's toy of that. Meet Norm of the North. He never gave his name. Also, the lemmings start peeing again. Yeah, we see that Mr. Green is a cowardly germaphobe, like every other evil CEO of the 2010s. When roaring doesn't work, Norm turns on pop song number three and he starts dancing. See, this kind of animation with Mr. Green, it just doesn't work in 3D. It looks too awkward and uncanny. Unless you make something very stylized, which you clearly don't have the budget to do. Also, we learn that Mr. Green kidnapped Norm's grandfather. Heard the dirt, he's evil, so he needs to do all the evil stuff ever. Although, I, I have two questions, though, because this kind of breaks the plot even further. Then again, these questions are very simple, so you should easily be able to answer them. The first question is when, and the second question is why. I mean, this kind of plan, it, it seems like the first time that Mr. Green has even attempted to set shop in the Arctic. If he's never had anything to do with the Arctic in the past, then why the hell does he have Norm's grandfather? When and why did Norm's grandfather ever go to New York City? And with that, Mr. Green decides to try and assassinate Norm because he thinks that Norm is an assassin. Because all assassins introduce themselves, dance for you, and don't kill you when they have an easy opportunity. They're a nice bunch like that. Please don't kill me. Norm and Vera go out to sushi, while the lemmings stay behind and work on Mr. Green's receptionist, who looks like the studio stole a model from the Bratz cartoon from the early 2000s. After having been up in the Arctic myself and seeing how beautiful it is, 
I wonder if it's even good to have houses up there. So yeah, this is an environmental movie where the villain is named Mr. Green and he wants to sell houses that come with solar panels. And it was established earlier that if the humans really like the Arctic, they won't destroy the Arctic. The moral is not to build houses in the Arctic, which sounds like a stupid idea on paper anyway. It sounds like financial suicide to try to do this. Tell me if you heard this one before. So Mr. Green walks into a sushi restaurant wielding a tranquilizer gun. The police are on summer vacation, aren't they? Look, even taking out recent events, I don't think you can make this kind of joke funny anymore. It's just dark. And even in a kid's movie, completely unbelievable. The second that Mr. Green stepped out of the building with that thing, he would have been piledried by every police officer in the city. Instead of panicking, people start recording the fight. Mr. Green shoots a puffer fish, and then the sushi restaurant owner shoots Green in the ass. Is there a sharp pain in everyone's bottom? Yes, they're watching Norm of the North. And after breaking into a restaurant with an arm tranquilizer gun, with intent to shoot someone, letting off a shot, and needing to be violently subdued, they just let Mr. Green go. And Norm is also willingly in the same room with the guy who just tried to shoot him. So local news caught your outburst at Kazawa today and Norm's heroism. And look at our approval rankings. So let me get this straight. People are more willing to buy homes from the guy who apparently used to be respectable, who just went crazy and brought a tranquilizer gun into a restaurant with the intention to shoot a person that he thought was a talking bear, which is also going to be a center of his marketing campaign. Yeah, that, 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 that makes total sense. Perfect sense. Uh, no, no, just, I, I just, maybe, I, I, I don't know, I, I don't, I don't know, it, it's just a movie, it, it's just, it's just a movie, a very stupid fucking insulting movie that doesn't have a single ounce of logic or comedy and a failed attempt to pander to kids, with pissing lemmings, but yes, it, it, it's, it's just a movie, one of the worst movies I've ever seen, but yes, just, just, just a movie. And Mr. Green accidentally lets it slip that another polar bear is here. Norm automatically jumps to assuming that it's his grandfather because, you know, N New York doesn't have a zoo or anything. Oh my goodness, we are rising faster than the oceans. Hey, hey everybody, it's, a vi it's an environmental movie. You get it? This movie is environmentally friendly. Yeah, could you tell? And all Norm asks for payment is that he gets to stay in the model home while he lives in New York City. One that has a ton of security cameras that didn't catch Norm coming in from the Arctic. What a wonderful environmental message. It just makes me want to speed up global warming to melt the ice caps as soon as possible and kill every fucking one of those things. And oh my god, this movie's turning me into a Captain Planet villain. And on top of all that, Mr. Green's watching us so act natural. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm doing it. Crap on the environment. After all, the lemmings are doing it too. And if animals are crapping on the environment, it's perfectly okay for me too. And why should I care anyway? It's the polar bear's responsibility to care for the Arctic. I'd make a counter for all the fart jokes in the movie, but they don't make numbers that high. Norm finds the other Arctic because it's extremely easy to find one person you don't know the name of in a city of 8 million people. And it's a city where people don't ask questions if you're dressed like a giant polar bear. So. This guy, the actor, he's going to distract the cameras. And you know how he's going to do that? By sitting in the house with his mask off. Hey, what could possibly go wrong? And, and, and you know what? Does that sound totally, totally unbelievable? Even something that kids would think is absolutely fucking stupid. Well, screw you, because you know what? It, it works! It works! It actually fucking works! Because everyone in this film is, is a moron! You have the model with the mask on! It's on your computer! It's quicker to figure out that something is wrong than it takes to animate the scene! Is this just, is this just some kind of joke that they didn't convey well enough? Hmm. I just got it. That's our norm, huh? Is Mr. Green blind and stupid? Do they think kids are blind and stupid? Or do they think the kids were just so stupid that they couldn't figure out the difference between Norm and the actor themselves? What is wrong with you people? So Norm starts climbing the skyscraper. Along the way, he opens up the model home. Then he uses them to start climbing up the rest of the building. Nobody notices this because, as established, everyone in New York City has been turned into a fucking idiot. Even though Norm mentions that getting spotted climbing the skyscraper was a real possibility. Besides giving us a bunch of useless information, this scene tells us the councilwoman for the Polar Council is corrupt. Who would have guessed that the government official is corrupt in an environmental movie? Apparently, to be allowed to set up homes in the Arctic, 
Arctic, Miss Sabrina's going to give her a home in the Bahamas for his deal. Wait a minute, if the councilwoman was corrupt, why the hell is she requiring Mr. Green to need public approval? Wouldn't she just let him do it anyway if she was taking a bribe? Okay, so this scene used to establish that the government official is corrupt, which is another cliche. To establish this particular cliche, though, it requires further breaking down the already disjointed plot. There are no words for this level of failure. Then, Norm gets spotted, but he manages to get away just in time. And Mr. Green doesn't even question it, he doesn't look at the security camera, he just leaves the room. And with the door open, the lemmings run inside. They break the security camera and let Norm in, and then they all go searching for Norm's grandfather. Okay, think, if you were a slightly creepy one-note villain, where would you keep stuff hidden? Pointing out your problems does not make them go away. It's not good to have a one-note villain. It's annoying as hell when you point that out. It's easy to forgive a mistake, but it's not easy to forgive arrogance. Because security, the lemmings go into the elevator without Norm, and then the door crushes them and they die at the end. I'll never get my happy ending, will I? So the lemmings start jumping across security cameras as they get to Norm's grandfather. It's because of this possibility that Mr. Green put security cameras on the other side. They could easily spot anything hopping over the cameras on that side. You know, the ones that we saw in the previous shot? The cameras are all aiming down slightly. The ones higher up would be able to spot them easily. If you want to do a stealth scene, fine, but make sure the characters are actually being stealthy, no, not farting, burping, pissing plights on humanity. Hey, did you know that we're watching a Rob Schneider film? It, it, it was so subtle, I, I didn't think you could tell. So I thought it would be necessary to point that out. Grandpa told the Lemmings that Norm had to save the Arctic before he saved his grandfather. You know, by working for Mr. Green and becoming the center of the marketing campaign. And no, Norm isn't trying to make an ad campaign so terrible that no one would take it seriously. That would make sense. He's trying to make an ad campaign that really speaks to people, under employment of a guy who wants to basically destroy the Arctic. And Norm wants to do this making the Arctic seem great. I know I said I was going to talk about Olympia. She does nothing but add time to the movie. And I'm trying to make this review as short as possible, believe it or not. But this scene is so stupid that I need to comment on it. And it just showcases how useless she really is. Yes, hi Mr. Green. Sorry I didn't pick up before. Your mom is very good at her job, Ellen. You must be proud. I know. Sometimes I wish she wasn't so good at her job, if it meant she got to spend more time with me. First of all, this cliché can go die in a fire. No, no, it can go die in a volcano. I I'm, I'm gonna take this cliché, and I'm gonna go, gonna go to Pompeii with it. Oh my god, mommy or daddy, you work so much. Why don't you spend more time with me and not care if you get fired from your job that supports us, and that we'd be homeless without? And, and you know, I I'd be more fine with that plot line if that was the actual moral once in a while. But no, every single time this plot is used, the parent is demonized for actually having a job and supporting their family. Would it be great if they could spend more time with their kid? Sure, but it's not always easy, especially when you live in a place as expensive as New York City! Olympia is technically in the plot to give Vera motivation, but honestly, it's not really necessary. Even with Olympia written entirely out of the story, I've never found myself asking, why does she work for Mr. Green? It's a comfortable job. She probably won't get one of equal quality if she quits. And like I said, New York City is fucking expensive. And now here's the grand total of Olympia's actual contribution to the actual plot. I'm thinking. Maybe we can work together. Be honest. What's your plan here? Well, Mr. Green wants to use me to sell the Arctic, and I'm gonna use the Arctic to save it. Exactly! To rally the public so that they love you, wait for your moment, and turn them against Green. Use his own plan to defeat him. Yep, her purpose is agreeing with Norm's stupid fucking plan. She just agrees, but she doesn't actually contribute anything. But I do know on a technical level why she's in the movie. We need to have a kid character for kids to relate to, even if she's a useless waste of the animation. All of the cliches are there for a fit yourself in character. Parents not spending enough time with her? Check. Smarter than the adults around her? Check. Caring about what really matters? Check. Being the goodest person in the whole gosh darn movie? Check. All that's missing is a natural reason for her to be in the goddamn movie! The approval rating. I'll get it as high as possible, and then I'll strike. Wasn't that the plan all along? What the fuck was Norm trying to do after he decided to be an actor for Mr. Green? Olympia, you really are a genius. My mom's not the only one who studied marketing. Huh. I wonder. Animation Marketing 101. 2010's edition. It's only one page. Just rip off minions. You'll make the big bucks. Olympia, I think you're playing a shit. Speaking of shit, a bunch of shit happens. We we get a clip show. Yes, 
It's a movie with a clip show of earlier clips from the movie. It's not a sequel that has clips from the past movies. It's a movie with clips from this movie. And then we get a lot of dancing. God damn you, Norm. I actually like this song. So fuck you, Norm. It doesn't even make sense in context. This song is Shut Up and Dance. It's about a man meeting a woman at a dance club and then dancing with her. Pretty much like every other pop song, but whatever. Norm is mostly dancing by himself without anyone else specifically. And believe me, no one is demanding that Norm actually dance. The subject of the song is completely absent from the movie. It, it, it's like if Lion King's Can You Feel the Love Tonight scene didn't have Nala. It'd, it'd, be, it'd be weird. So this gets the approval rating up to 85% because we gotta rush over the actual, you know, plot. Oh, so this is kind of insulting given the actual quality of Norm of the North. But the councilwoman can't go through with this until Norm publicly says that he supports green homes in the Arctic. Considering that he's the main draw of the advertising, wouldn't that go without saying? Considering that we've had a pop song less than three minutes ago, the movie decides that we need another pop song, like, right now! You know what, I, I shouldn't complain about these pop songs. Because all of these pop songs, that, that probably means that like 95% of my money went to soundtrack royalties and not the people who put this film together with super glue and a crowbar. After the dance scene, Norm tries to say that Green Holmes is a terrible idea, but Mr. Green uses clips from previous conversations because of course he did. Norm of the North supports green homes in the Arctic. This whole crisis could have been averted, and no one would have wanted to set up a home in the Arctic if Norm did what the king said and stayed home. What the hell did you expect to happen? I mean, this plot is so stupid and juvenile, the door of the explorer is laughing at you. Newborn cooties over there can see the problems with this plot. But believe it or not, it gets dumber. So, now that Green has everything he needs to sell things in the Arctic legally, he starts doing it illegally and claiming that he's above the law. I'm Norm of the North, king of nothing. Hey, let's, let's put that on the box. It's a tagline. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm very out of it right now. This movie is just making my brain leak. It's making me extremely happy that someone is trying to destroy the Arctic. You know, Norm of the North and maybe every other animated environmental thingy. Maybe people would give a crap about the environment if every single solitary show with an environmental message wasn't completely batshit stupid ham-fisted over the top pieces of pairing annoying crap that thinks his audience is an abject moron. Every single cartoon or anime movie, with very little exception, trying to say save the rainforest or the Arctic or whatever, has been just plain fucking awful. I mean, if no one was making these messages to try to save the environment, I bet global warming would be slower. You know, if they felt that their message was important, they'd actually put some effort into their product. By God. All of the computers used to animate and render this movie. I wonder how much strain that put on power plants. Maybe they had to increase their CO2 output to keep up with the demand, which would further melt the Arctic ice caps. All for a movie that no one wanted to see. I came to save my home, I ended up destroying it. This plan could not have resolved in any other way. Vera sees Norm and invites him to dinner. Pointless, stupid slapstick. Olympia's just not really challenged at her current school. That's why Magister Mundi will be so great. All the students are like Olympia. I actually think Olympia and myself are a lot alike. Okay, from her point of view, you just lied to her, bailed out on your plan, and ensured the destruction of the Arctic, something that is proven that she really cares about. But if that's the way you truly feel, wow man, that's pretty harsh. She's just a kid. Not over yet, Norm. You can still do something. Wow, Olympia is so detached from the plot, it's like she's been in an entirely separate movie. They plan to stop the investors. It kinda sorta works, but Mr. Green doesn't really care, and is gonna do this anyway, so the scene just wastes time, really. So, the investors tell Norm something that he already knew. That Mr. Green was putting homes in the Arctic as soon as possible. It also resolves the Olympia plot, because we all cared, like, just so much. Commence operation. Kill that bear. You know, operations tend to have code names, so people who might be listening in can't, you know, guess what you're talking about. Between saving the Arctic and saving his grandpa, Norm chooses saving his grandpa. Which, at this point in the movie, just seems kind of selfish. Considering that this whole thing is all Norm's fault! Grandpa is saved, but to be totally honest, you could have written this whole movie without him. Speaking of which, Mr. Green's plan would have absolutely failed if not for the help of Norm. And not to mention that pretty much everything else he did kind of failed as well. Also, Vera didn't really do anything except get Mr. Green to hire Norm, which he might have done anyway. The only characters who actually do, like, literally anything of substance in this movie are the fucking Lemmings. Everyone else in this movie is a moron for nothing but a cheap laugh, has no effect on the plot whatsoever, and Norm himself is pretty much just trying to get to where he was at the start of the film. What? 
That isn't Norm! No fucking shit, you stupid abject moron! You idiotic brain dead imbecile, of course that's not fucking Norm! You know, you wouldn't have to go against traffic if you moved a little bit to your- to your right, right? Okay, fine, dipshits, do things the hard way. They finally get off the road, only to be stopped by a helicopter. Then Norm and his grandfather get tranked a bunch, and they fall into traffic and die. You know, this movie has so many possibilities for a happy ending, but it just seems to want to forego all of them. For some reason, Mr. Green puts Norm and his grandfather inside the helicopter, above the boat. Why is the helicopter flying above the boat? You want the polar bears as far away from the boat as possible. You're in a helicopter. Those things can fly pretty far and fast. Just shoot those bears. Green said to put them out of their misery and dump them in the ocean. Why did you wait for them to wake up? Why, why did you trank them? Why didn't you just shoot them to begin with? After another moment of stupid, the lemmings pull a lever and everyone falls to their death. The end. Please stop. Please stop, movie. I I'm sorry. I promise I won't tell anyone if you just stop. Please. Please just stop. Oh, you're, n you're not gonna stop, are you? You're, you're not gonna stop until I'm dead. Norm saves his grandpa in a scene that I'm pretty sure I've seen in another movie. Pretty- I'm, I'm pretty sure it was District 9. Yeah, th that's the movie. It was District 9. The wet polar bear first texture, by the way. It looks hideous. Norm, no matter what happens, just know that I'm proud of- For going to New York City and making everyone extremely accepting of the idea of putting homes in the Arctic. You've come a long way. Well, the gutter does go pretty deep. You might think you're not a hunter, but you are. Your way of hunting is just different than everyone else. Hunting? When was this movie about hunting? God damn, that was such a long time ago. What the hell does it even mean? Even if we use the word poetically, Norm didn't do anything that could remotely be considered hunting. Except going to New York and coming back with a bunch of danger. And if that's the kind of hunting that Norm is good at, he's better off being a failure. The boat hits a storm because we can't have a boat in a movie without being in a storm. And we get to Norm's plan. Trying to flip over a boat, lugging four giant houses. Keep in mind that these are two polar bears that barely broke through metal bars. Also, you could have done this like, as soon as you left the shore, you didn't have to wait until you hit the storm. They detached the driving boat from the carrier, and now everything should be good. It'll just wander aimlessly forever because there are no people on the driving boat who can notice what just happened. It's not like the houses are their prime responsibility or anything. Also, we can't have a storm at sea without a tidal wave, so here's a tidal wave. You know, nature seems like a bit of a dick in this environmentally friendly movie. Norm hides underneath the waves, and then a tower pins him to the ocean floor, and he drowns, and the movie ends. I mean, it'd be the absolute perfect ending. Really, it, it would. I mean, here, he's made a mistake, and he's gone all this way to try and fix it. And he's finally stopped the bad guy from ruining the Arctic and fixed his screw-up. The lemmings get to drown, and now Norm is paying for every stupid decision that he's ever made. It's like, it's like a beautiful Shakespearean tragedy, with a twerking bear. You don't want to ruin that, do you? I mean, we even get a flashback of everyone that Norm is fighting for. Like, that guy who no one remembers, and what's-his-face, can't forget him, a glimpse into hell, and, and what's-her-name, people who basically weren't even in the movie. All the people that Norm cared for, but the audience didn't. Norm fought for them to live bland and stupid lives, and now he could die peacefully at the bottom of the sea. God damn it, movie, why do you keep doing this to me? I'm getting kind of angry now. Back in New York, Vera quit and- Mr. Green, I'm sorry. But I cannot help you destroy somebody's home in order to build houses no one needs. I quit. And Green looks like an idiot as all of his plans come crumbling down. These condos weren't for any of you peasants anyway. They were for the one percent. The one percent! You know, he could literally say, everybody hate me right now, and it would be just as fitting and believable. And he falls in the sewer, by a ponytail that they said was detachable. Norm wakes up. Considering that he was last seen floating in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, I'm going to assume that he's died and is in the afterlife. Yeah, he's definitely in the afterlife. This is hell. As far as I can tell, that's where this movie can reside for the rest of eternity. Everything about this movie I is wrong. Every plot point is confusing at best. Every time a character does something, not only is it stupid, it seems that their own intentions are counterintuitive to their own desires. Seriously, Norm, what the hell? What the hell was your plan? To stop a CEO from building homes in the Arctic, you become the center of his marketing, trying to make it seem like a good idea to build homes in the Arctic. Sabotage wasn't even your original intention, because the movie had to add Olympia, you trying to say something to save the Arctic was her idea. Unless you're saying that Olympia had no purpose whatsoever in the movie. 90% of the characters contribute nothing to the movie at all, and that's a conservative estimation. 
The only characters that I know contribute something to the movie are the minion ripoffs, the lemmings. And these characters are so bad, they make you want to watch Disney's Wild Wilderness on loop for the rest of your life. They fill every scene they're in with fart, burp, vomit, and pee jokes. And as for animation, I've seen made-for-television 3D shows that look better than this. I, I will give this movie one thing though, it was really good at sending us a message. The Arctic is evil and everything within it is a menace to everything good and decent in the world, and we should take it upon ourselves to destroy it as quickly as possible. And with my giant magnifying glasses I got with the refund from this movie, I will do just that! Combined, I am Captain Planet! Holy shit, it's Captain Planet. I gotta get out of here. If you haven't heard, he's the Mega Mac Daddy of Ecology, so a fight with him could get a little dirty. I'll see you next time, everybody. Captain Planet, you don't understand. I'm doing this for the good of us all. You don't want to live in a world with Arctic lemmings, Captain Planet. You don't. Put Bad guys who like to loot and plunder. We're the Planeteers. You can be one too. Cause saving our planet is the thing to do Looting and polluting is not the way Hear what Captain Planet has to say The power is yours!